you know, if you're a hygienist, sometimes you don't see beyond the bleeding gums and the plaque and, and all that other stuff and the patient who doesn't floss. But you've got to realize that we're doing something special. Mm-hmm. And you gotta you got to find what you love yeah. and capitalize on it. Because if you're going to work miserable, it, it, I don't care how much or how little you're earning. If you're mm-hmm. miserable, damn it, do something else. Yeah. And I, yeah. I, I didn't write about it. I, I will speak about it. But mm-hmm. I came very close to that early in my career. Yeah. It's miserable. Yeah. I'm happy. Oh, you yes. <laughs> I mean, I feel it in the book. I see it in your face. I, you know, I'm so glad we met. And, you know, the, the reason for this call today is because, uh, you know, I do a lot of uh, new grads boot camp or related spe- specifically to dental hygiene. And I just, you know, there's some gaps I have personally, too. Even when I talk, I'm, a, I'm talking as a hygienist. Yeah. And there's many people in the office. It's not just me as a hygienist who should be talking. So that's why I love inviting people to get, you know, other things that I didn't know or, you know, that I should share. Um, but that doesn't come just from my wisdom because there's a lot out there like yours. So there, there you know, um, is this part being recorded, Claire? Or are we going to? Uh, no, I mean. You okay, know, lead, lead me into this when, yeah, yeah. when we get on this thing. But one of the very important things that we have to realize mm-hmm. is that there is not one hygienist in the world that's going to be Claire. Mm-hmm. There's not one hygienist in the world that's going to be Alan. Mm-hmm. I can't be Frank Spear, Jeff Rouse, John Coyce, or any of those guys. And you can't be upset or feel um, belittled because of it. You, okay. the, the, our object here as professionals, we're not tradesmen, we're professionals, and we better stay that Thank way, you. is yeah. to take little bits of what the great hygienists give mm-hmm. us and put, you've had your mentors in hygiene, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and you are a composite, not an amalgam, that's toxic, <laughs> you're a composite of, of your mentor's knowledge into your head, filtered in through your specialness. You're right. That's what we all are. Mm-hmm. That's An alloy. Are. That's right. <laughs> non-toxic alloy. That's yes, right. Non-toxic alloy. <laughs> okay. And so, would you mind if I use humor during my of talk? Of course, of course. You know, this is this is really you know I, I you know speak and do things like that, but this is really I want them to listen in their car. You know, having a good day. So the perfect. Of course, Alan, you can. Okay. Thanks um, for asking, though. Where are you right now, Alan? I, this is my office. Know. This is my okay. private office. I In see. the background are different little pictures that I have of uh, real cool things that have happened in my life and people that I've Great. met. And if over, you don't, pardon sorry, me? if you don't mind, um, I'm going to ask lead with like, what do I see in the background? Things like that. So they get to know you a little bit more personally as well, if that's okay but, with you. Yeah, let me see something really cool. Um, one of the cool things. Um, are you a football fan at all? Well, you know, I've been in Boston. The only God we know here is Tom Brady. So. Oh, 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 <laughs> oh, that oh, hurts. <laughs> oh now I'm going to have acid erosion on the backs of my teeth. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this gentleman, mm-hmm. uh, you're a little young for this. This is a gentleman named Perfect. Gary Quazzo. Okay. Gary Quazzo was uh-huh. a, he was the backup quarterback to John Unitas mm-hmm. of the Baltimore Colts, mm-hmm. backup to Joe Cap of the Minnesota Vikings, and the first uh, quarterback of the New Orleans Saints when they were established. Uh-huh. Gary became an orthodontist. He went to dental school while he was a football player. <laughs> and he, he became an orthodontist in this area and retired. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And his son is a, my go-to orthodontist. So I had dinner with Gary Quazzo. Amazing. And I got an autograph of one of the great football players of my childhood. Uh huh. So, yeah, and he just... he's, he's in your field too. He's in our field too. A dental yeah. professional. Yeah, he's retired. Nice. His son uh-huh. is the man now. And, um, mm-hmm. you know, they're just people of significance because for me, it's all about people. Mm-hmm. And wow. over to my right yeah. is a monitor. Yeah. And we do co discovery in here. Right behind me, mm-hmm. you can see two chairs. Right. And um, what will happen is I'll either sit here mm-hmm. or on the chair near the wall. 
Yes. And I'll put up images of the patient's mouth up there. Mm -hmm. And we'll go through a set of photographs mm -hmm. so people can see what I see I and see, own see. their own problem. So mm -hmm. if you want to tour the office in that way, I'm, I'm glad to do it. It might bore them to death. But um, if you think it's interesting, then lead me there and I'll go there. I think, you know, it's nice to connect personally as well. It always gives you, you know, a lot more connection and, and a buy-in into um, your message. So I would love that. Thank you. And this, of course, so, is, that's from the talk I gave, the, uh, me and my wife in different uh -huh. scenarios. So, yeah, that's the most important. <laughs> Lovely. Okay. So, Alan, I'm going to start, okay? So, we rock, I'll roll. Yeah, I'm a, yeah. Okay. Just like we just met, okay? Yes, ma'am. All right. Here we are. So, hello, everybody. This is Claire, a dental toaster student, RDH. And I have today a special guest. His name is Alan. We met actually pretty recently, but he always had a, this nice smile on his face. I thought he was just awesome. And he wrote this book that is called Enjoy the Ride. You have it right now? Oh, yes. You can get it on Amazon. That's where I got it from. And it, to me, when I read it, it was like chicken soup for me. It just warms me up. It gives you some wisdom, but also really like a human side, not like you need to do this, 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 and this to be a better dental professional. So I really thought, you know, Alan, I'm going to call you Alan, if that's okay with you. Not that's Dr. my Stern. name. That's yep. my name. <laughs> um, to be here and give us some advice, you know, as dental hygienists, especially those who are newer in the profession. So welcome, sure. Alan. Claire, uh, I'm just totally honored and delighted to be mm -hmm. with you. This started as some random conversation in an elevator. You're right. As I remember, we were mm -hmm. both at the Dental Speakers Institute and right. uh, we, j we just connected right away. Mm -hmm. and it's just kind of cool how things happen. <laughs> so um, I've been practicing for almost 39 years. Wow. And <clears throat> I'm just getting started. I enjoy what I'm doing. I enjoy uh -huh. my ride. It yeah. wasn't always that way. Yes. And I've discovered a lot of truths in mm -hmm. our profession and in life. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. We get so hung up, Claire, on the clinical aspects of what we do, and we should. Yes. What we're doing, we got to do things right, and we mm -hmm. got to do things to the best of our ability. Yes. But so often we forget that, number one, we're doing something very special for another human being. Yes. And very often that human being is extremely frail and vulnerable mm -hmm. and we don't mm -hmm. even know it. Mm -hmm. And we touch their lives, we touch their souls, we improve their lives mm -hmm. every single hour. And if we get this into our tissues, if we get this mm -hmm. into our hearts and heads, mm -hmm. all of a sudden mm -hmm. uh, we'll talk the practice of dentistry, the practice of dental hygiene. Yes doesn't become drudgery. It becomes mm. a labor of love. Mm. Wow. What care. a quick, I mean, it's just, it was like one sentence that you said, you know, it really changes already how I think about dentistry because I'm always trying to solve, solve some problems, but it's not just that. You, you know, we're solving problems, but really Claire and um, our fellow dental professionals, our fellow mm -hmm. hygienists, Whose problem is it that we're solving? It's the patient. Do we, do we own the bleeding gums? Do we it's not own us. the correct the heavily accumulated mm -hmm. plaque? Do we own the health risks mm -hmm. that come with all that? No. On the other side of it, mm -hmm. and Clara, when did you grab mask when you graduated hygiene school? That was about seven years ago. All right, so. Oh, you, they're making people so young these days. <laughs> I graduated. I, <laughs> man, you people are getting younger. I graduated from <laughs> school in 1981. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've I done to, a, a lot of things in my life before going to hygiene. So yeah. I was the oldest one, actually, in my class. That, but yeah, wow, hygiene that's, is fairly That's awesome. Me. But um, mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be 67 in June. You're still very young. So... <laughs> <laughs> But thing, the world has changed since I was in yeah. dental school. Mm -hmm. The world has changed since you finished your hygiene program. Mm -hmm. um, and you, you've attained a lot of wisdom in a short time, by the way. That, that is awesome and cool. But um, one thing that hasn't changed enough is the authoritarian model of doctoring people or of hygiene. Yes, people. okay. When I was in school, 
There was a dentist who, who bragged that he would clean patients' teeth. In, in the 70s and 80s, oftentimes that happened. And he would scrape some plaque off of a patient's tooth and put on a Ritz cracker and ask the patient if they would eat it. How, how does a person mm -hmm. feel when they're put yeah. in that situation? Mm -hmm. We have the opportunity mm -hmm. to lead with love. Mm -hmm. We have the opportunity, especially hygienists. Mm -hmm. Hygienists have such a fantastic, intimate interaction with another yeah. human being. Mm -hmm. you can, what's going on there? Sorry, it's, it's <laughs> my friend. He's trying to... <laughs> Hi, friend. <laughs> uh, Sorry, you so you were talking about love, like, you know. Yeah, you, you know, you get a person in the chair who's clearly not doing what they should be doing. Mm -hmm. And you have the opportunity to do two things. One, you can say, Claire, you're not yeah. flossing your teeth. Yeah. What's the matter with you? Yeah. And the person on the other side laid out in a vulnerable position with sharp mm -hmm. instruments coming at them, mm -hmm. feels intimidated. They feel inferior. They feel like this, this um, nurse ratchet sitting above mm -hmm. them is mm -hmm. belittling them as, as she's hurting them while scraping their teeth. Or mm -hmm. you can say, hey, Claire, I'm glad you're here today. I'm delighted to meet you. Tell me, tell me about your day. Tell mm -hmm. me how it's been going the last six months. Uh, of course, with all the health history updates, mm -hmm. but tell me about your life a little bit. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm so glad your daughter's getting married. That's awesome. I'm really mm -hmm. glad to hear that. Oh, you're preoccupied with all of that. Okay, I get it. Maybe you left a little plaque on your gums. You're so busy. It's okay. Let's see what's going on here. Oh, here's a real good spot here. You see this on the lower right, Claire? That's perfect gums. That's good. Over here, we're bleeding a little bit. So we can do a little bit better. And let me show you how. Now we can go clean your teeth. And by the way, Claire, it may be a little sensitive for you in those bleeding areas. I'm going to do the best I can to make it easy. You just let me know what's going on. And I can call Doc in to numb you, or I can numb you myself, depending on the licensure. I could put some topical on there. Let's make this as easy as possible for you. And you bond with them. And you listen to them. And you talk to them about them. Them. Yes, you're right. Yeah. In the beginning, you said, who owns the problem? You know, yeah. we, we need to be focused on the patient. I love what you said because... Um, you know, especially as a young grad, you know, we've been taught to just not really the human aspect. And you talk about that in your book, too. I mean, yeah. when you go to school, you know, there's no real human aspect of dentistry that we learn. It's like textbook, got to know this. You got to be mm -hmm. better at this. And your teachers are there to make you be better at what you mm -hmm. do, but not really in that human aspect. So that's why I really connect with that, because I think one of the number one reason people either leave their job or are unsatisfied because it's people. But there are many things that we can do, just like your people's management skills that makes us feel comfortable, that will make the patient feel comfortable too. And we talk about compliance. Yep. But that, that makes us be better professional and really want to retain our jobs as well. Like yep. be happy dental professionals. Yeah. I, I think mm -hmm. when they connect to you, mm -hmm. The, they become, if you want to use the word compliant, okay, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you're going to, you're going to follow somebody that you like and who know, and who, you know, likes you much more readily than you're going to follow somebody who smacks you over the head with it. And as a hygienist, you're going to love your job. If every person coming in is looking forward to seeing you think about it. Um, I, I wrote about it in the book last June, I, I went to speaking consulting network and we heard a guy named Todd Williams, who is, he was the uh, PR guy for the four seasons hotel chain. And now he's in a similar capacity for a large healthcare corporation in California. And what Todd Williams said really hit me between the eyes because he said, being good is not good enough. We all have skills. I am sure you are a brilliantly talented hygienist, Claire. And I am sure that every single person listening to this has some level of clinical skill that nobody else has. Even a beginner has a skill that few other people have. Not enough. Yes. Not enough. Mm -hmm. 
you lead with love. Think about um, where were you at 9-11 and what did you need more than anything else? Uh, Fran, my wife and I were in the office when it mm -hmm. happened. And my, my wife is my front desk person. Mm -hmm. What did we think about first? The kids. Yeah. We needed to hold our kids. Mm -hmm. When it all, what our most basic need is love. Mm -hmm. And our second need, according to Brene Brown, mm -hmm. is a need for connection and belonging. Mm -hmm. So we can use this as dentists and as dental hygienists. Mm -hmm. for the betterment of our patients. Because if there's a sense of love in our operatories, wow. we are going to get our jobs done so much better because mm -hmm. people will want to see us. People will want to do what mm -hmm. we teach them and coach them is in their best interest. Use love as your tool. That's, the most, that's much more important than your scalers. Wow, love. I, I didn't see this coming. I didn't see this coming. You yeah. know, as a wisdom, this is so good. And you talk about love in your book as well. I know you use that line, I, right? Let's talk about love. Yeah. What uh -huh. else is there? You know, yeah. I, I just put up a, a post mm -hmm. on uh, my Better, Richer, Stronger uh, page. Mm -hmm. And um, Monday, Monday and Tuesday, we were slammed. Mm. I was busting it. And we have a four-person office. Myself, my wife, my hygienist, my assistant. We work hard. We work very hard. And man, I was, Monday and Tuesday, I was ready to hit the floor. I was, I was done. But a feeling swept over me that just came to my consciousness in the middle of this frenzy I was in. I like these people. I walked out of a treatment room, run like crazy, and I just, I like that guy. I like that lady. Hey, this is fun. And how much better can it get if you're coming in, than if you're coming into the office and saying, my patients are cool, and my patients think I'm cool. Wow. That's good. And my doc thinks I'm cool, and I love the guy, too. How, why? Mm. There is no good reason why we can't have that happen. Mm. Done. Mm. And hygienists, and, hygienists, yeah. I have so, something for you all. If the doc doesn't lead with love, yes. you do. Yes. Try it. Try it. Try it. Because one thing that won't happen, you won't mm -hmm. get hurt. You, you'll never, ever get mm -hmm. hurt mm -hmm. if you put your goodwill, your good wishes, and your love mm -hmm. of another human being out there in front of you. Mm -hmm. What may happen is the doc might say, hey, Claire's got something going on here. I want to drink what she's drinking. Mm -hmm. Lead with Contagious. Love. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the spirit of the office. Um, I have patients who uh, appropriately get up out of the chair and kiss my assistant. Appropriately. Not, okay, not, okay. You know, yeah, yeah. You no, know, there's love. And then there's, yes. There's <laughs> love and then there's kind of garbage that's on trial. You can't. You know, we can't do the terrible mm -hmm. things that are going on here. And there are mm -hmm. boundaries to love. Mm -hmm. uh, the love of me and my wife, you and mm -hmm. your husband, is much different than the love of us and our patients. It's a much right. different thing. Mm -hmm. So we have to be very mindful of that. I see, but I see. when my assistant extends love to patients oh. like that, man, I know we got it. Wow. It's lovely to hear that from you because as hygienists, honestly, we're very stressed because we work for someone, with someone generally, right? We are rarely the business owner or decision maker. So it is like, I, sometimes I want to make changes, you know, I, yeah. I want office to feel this way. I want patients to, to be treated this way. I want this unit or whatever that is. But it's hard to convey that message to someone else. Mm -hmm. And obviously, if we want an instrument or something, we need to say it. But I think this act of love, just, just sharing that, showing it to the patient, will transfer to the other person who owns the office or the dentist or even the assistant, everybody. Um, and, and I feel like there will, there will be really a big like, fundamental power change that can happen, as you said, if we lead with love. I think so. And mm. I understand that it could be very frustrating to a hygienist who is not 
his or her own boss right. and doesn't control, let's say, mm-hmm. the instruments or the cash mm-hmm. flow right. in the office. But mm-hmm. what we can start with mm-hmm. is our attitude. Mm-hmm. And if we can infect our patients mm-hmm. with attitude. this attitude, mm-hmm. man, I want to go to Dr. Stern's office because Claire is the hygienist and mm-hmm. I love that lady. Mm-hmm. My hygienist, Jess, is mm-hmm. just... I can't say enough good things about her really? that we, we had, um, we're just coming off the best month we've ever had. And Congratulations. I just, yeah. And I, I looked at her and mm-hmm. she knew what I was telling her just with my yeah. eyes. Wow. And I knew what she, she was saying right back mm-hmm. to me. There mm-hmm. is nothing that she wouldn't do for me or I for her. Wow. She, um, she is the most tech savvy person in the office. <laughs> So if my wife, That's gold. <laughs> well, my wife and I are, we're good, but uh, my wife is not that good. Uh-huh. And I don't have the time because mm-hmm. I'm back there with patients. Um, but Jess, it, between patients, she'll come up and she'll help Fran. She'll help me. Mm-hmm. She'll set things up on our computers, which may take us an hour. That'll take her five minutes. And she'll, mm-hmm. she'll clean up. She'll mm-hmm. go and assist she will, she'll empty the garbage if she has to empty the garbage. Why? Because mm-hmm. we're here for each other. We've created a sense of team. I see, I see. You don't, and this is in the book also. You don't work for me, you work with me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And hi, Janice, mm-hmm. look for docs with that attitude because they're a whole lot more fun to work with. Yeah, so, I mean, one thing that I take personally, you know, when you're sharing the story, too, is like, instead of thinking, okay, my doctor is not doing this for me, like he's not willing to change or whatever that is, you know, if we, we show also participation, help, you know, I'll take the trash out, I'll do this and that, yeah. you know, that become also contagious. The other yeah. person can start seeing the value instead of kind of waiting and saying, you know, I want more pay, you know, I want more, you know, hours or why are you cutting my hours or things like mm-hmm. that. We all want more pay. Mm-hmm. I want more pay. Mm-hmm. The only person I know who doesn't want more pay is you, Claire. <laughs> Whoops. <Thank you>. <laughs> <laughs> well, We're, we all want to grow yeah. and we all want mm-hmm. to earn more Yes. and we all want to make more. But mm-hmm. let's, let's partition this into two pieces, please. Okay. The money. Yes. We must make enough money to support our families. Yes, for and sure. And to give us some satisfaction. There's some base of pay mm-hmm. that every hygienist really needs to be earning. Oh, of course. Well, and that's regional. You know, that's, that's you yeah. and your region. That's, that's you. And it has to do with your production as well. Because the fact of life mm-hmm. is that the hygienist, to keep the business going, needs to produce yeah. three times her, uh, needs to, Okay. needs to produce three times her salary per hour in order to justify it. Mm-hmm. That is a financial fact of life. Right. That's real. We can't change that mm-hmm. just as we can't change gravity holding us down. Mm-hmm. Um, business is, is a living thing. Mm-hmm. They'll practice whether we like it or not is a business. Um, there have been many months where Jess has been paid way over what I should be paying her. Why? because there's nothing I wouldn't do for her and nothing she wouldn't do for me. We've had slow months. We've had tough times here. Right. Even in a 30, 33 year old practice, Mm -hmm. we run into some tough months. Yeah. And there are times when Jess's production is not equal to three times her Mm -hmm. salary. Mm -hmm. What do I do about it? Cut her out. I won't do that. Mm. You know why I won't do that? Because Jess is who she is. Mm -hmm. And it's because I need her every mm-hmm. bit as much as she needs me. Mm-hmm. I see. So, so we, you, you really see it as a team. Like, I mean, I, I would love to be in that office and be a patient, be a team member. And, I, you know, I wish all of our offices were like that. But, Alan, you, you learn all, all of those things. But did you know all this when you graduated dental school and started to practice? Or? Yes, Claire. Yes, Claire. I knew everything. <laughs> and I continue to know everything. And don't you forget that. I know you talked about dental school and things in your book too. Yeah. My life was a very humbling life. Yeah. I I don't want to uh, take up the time with the things that encumbered me as a child. Um, Mm -hmm. You want to learn about it? You could read the book. Um, Mm -hmm. The book is not, I think you could, 
I could pretty fairly say it's not me centric. It's the lessons that I've learned yes, for sure. from my upbringing that you can take with you. But the bottom line is every one of us, number one, has some baggage. Mm-hmm. Number two, everyone has burdens. Number three, mm-hmm. we can over resilience mm-hmm. is very important. So I started mm-hmm. out very humble. I started out very intimidated. Mm-hmm. I started out really knowing that I didn't know a daggone thing. Okay. And I felt very badly about it most of my mm-hmm. career. You hygienists, you don't know mm-hmm. everything either, and you have a lot to learn. Oh my God, so out of that. You, you <laughs> Use that as your strength mm-hmm. and keep learning and keep getting better because yeah. that feels good. Definitely. Feels good. Education, I mean, learning conferences or from mentors, mm-hmm. as you said. Yeah. Um, it, it's really valuable. But Alan, would you have some like advice for the younger graduates, you know, like those who come out of not just fresh out of school, but maybe even five years mm-hmm. because, you know, even me, I still have a learning curve. I'm still learning. And in 10 yeah. years, I might reflect on myself and be a different person in my practice. So anything for the younger one? All right. You youngsters out there, listen up. Yeah. All right. So the first thing, mm-hmm. never, ever stop learning. Okay. If, if you have access to the, the doc CE, for example, if your doc belongs to a study club, mm-hmm. can I come along doc one evening? Okay. You'll blow them out of the water. Okay. You blow them out of the water. Number two, there are so many different sources for hygienists and Claire, you know more about this than I do. Um, you're a hygiene educator. Mm-hmm. Um, hook up with somebody like Claire and take courses and pick their brains. Mm -hmm. Go to hygiene association meetings Mm -hmm. and hang out with like-minded people. That is very important. Mm -hmm. You young hygienists out there, get out and network or learn or get into groups with your Mm -hmm. colleagues. Mm -hmm. And if you do that, you will find that segment of dental hygienists that thinks like you. Mm -hmm. Not all of us are the same. Right. Not all dentists are the same. Not all mm-hmm. hygienists are the same. Mm-hmm. Not all hygienists are in it for the same reason that you are, Claire. Mm-hmm. So some will enjoy the volume, production, okay. um, you know, fast paced kind of thing. Some will enjoy being a charity provider, a Medicaid mm-hmm. provider to the underserved. Mm-hmm. Some will enjoy military. Some will enjoy academics. Mm-hmm. Some will enjoy private practice. So mm-hmm. Young hygienists hang out at the beginning with as many different Mm -hmm. types of practices of hygienists Mm -hmm. as you can. Meet different docs Mm -hmm. along the way and try and figure out what your niche is, what your why is. Somebody, somebody, you, Mr. Ling? All right, I'm my, my, the gentleman who cleans my office is here. No problem. Uh, uh, hey. And uh, we also we are blessed to have a guy like that in our office. Ah, perfect yeah, gentleman, yeah. absolute perfect gentleman. So much fun to be with. Um, so find your why. Mm-hmm. Find that niche that you like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and it doesn't make you better, superior, mm-hmm. or inferior to anybody mm-hmm. else because you like it. Mm-hmm. Do it because you like it. And as the book, and you say, you say, don't, I mean, you're not alone. Something like, something along the lines that you say that um, there are other team members also involved where you can find other groups that are similar to you that yes. makes you feel belong as well. Yes. You know, that's it, definitely true. Yeah. It, and in the age of the internet, there are Facebook <laughs> groups out there that yes. you can interact with. <laughs> and, but Take heed, though. Be very cautious. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There is no substitute for Mm -hmm. eye to eye. For this type of communication you and I are doing, Mm -hmm. no substitute for it. So you could connect Mm -hmm. with people. Mm -hmm. You could establish a baseline. Okay. Talk to people. Mm -hmm. And lay yourself out there. Mm -hmm. And lay out your issues. Mm -hmm. Because you're going to find that any problem, any difficulty you may be having, you're Obvious, not, you are not the only one. Mm-hmm. There, there's nothing that you're going through that somebody else hasn't gone through. A lot of people go through this. That is true because even right now, I mean, obviously we're having this call because I, I want to share more stories from people who have more wisdom than me. But even me as a hygienist, you know, for example, calculating in my production, you know, there's some rules about this and some people do it this way. And, you know, they're, many different, you know, kind of small calculations that you can do. 
And, you know, then I, I ask my friends or I ask people who have a lot more knowledge than me saying, you know, what do you feel the best way for me to approach this, um, calculate my production is. So, you know, I do it a little differently than I did in the very beginning. I include mm -hmm. a few more things that I did in the beginning, for example. Mm -hmm. And that's only possible because we talk people. I talk to people, right? Yes. You have mm -hmm. to know, um, mm -hmm. you have to know the value of what you're doing. Mm -hmm. I think, um, I, I think, for example, um, scale root planning. Yes. Scaling root planning. Um, what's the value of it and who, who would benefit most from it? And it's not, you, you have to establish your own clinical criteria with your doc. Mm -hmm. And if your doc doesn't buy into it, you're going to have yeah. to really um, educate him on it. Right. My hygienist educates me. Okay. In fact, one of my biggest mentors right now is a hygienist mm -hmm. who teaches me. I do not know everything. Mm -hmm. And I learn from people who are older than me. And I learn from people who are younger than me. So my hygienist is a treasure trove of knowledge for me. So when you lead with love, mm -hmm. hygienist, when you put your heart in the office and that doc knows that you're giving it everything mm -hmm. from here, mm -hmm. from here, mm -hmm. and from here, mm -hmm. the doc is more likely to be receptive to your mm -hmm. suggestions. So, and then, even more important, the patient well, gee, um, I'm going to commit a sin here, Claire. So this is going to be our little secret. Don't tell anybody. You hygienists out there, this is our secret. Hey, Claire, my insurance isn't going to pay for that deep cleaning. I'm not doing it. Mm. Pooey on Yui. Well, Alan, um, you need it. And then I'm going to tell you to buzz off in four very good words. You know those four words that a patient, where a patient tells a doc to buzz off, don't you? I can't I'll afford it. Think about it. Oh, I'll think about it. <laughs> I'll think yes. about it. Mm -hmm. um, so we have to transmit the value. Yeah. My insurance mm -hmm. will pay for it, Claire. Yeah. Well, Alan, here's where you are in the, in the driver's seat, and you have a decision mm -hmm. to make mm -hmm. because the value of what I would do for you is mm -hmm. you know, oral systemic. Mm -hmm. to, um, heart disease, diabetes, mm -hmm. Alzheimer's, cancers, mm -hmm. tooth loss, misery, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so on and so mm -hmm. forth. Mm -hmm. And you have to find, mm -hmm. you have to get that patient to um, elicit their el elicit their desires. Right. What do they want? Mm -hmm. I want to be healthy for my grandchildren. I want to keep up with my kids. I want to, um, I want to look good so I could attract a spouse. Mm -hmm. I want to interview that well. I'm, I, I need to present nicely. Mm -hmm. You've got to find their need and you've got to find if there's a pain point. Yes. You've got to see how your wonderful services mm -hmm. address their yeah. pain point. May mm -hmm. I, I'm going to tell you one other secret, Claire. Sure. That we can't let any of our patients know this. Okay. The hygienist? Shh. Yes. 90% of what we do mm -hmm. is 100% elective. Oh, okay. You don't have to uh -huh. get your teeth clean. Uh -huh. How many bleeding uh -huh. gum, tooth uh -huh. missing, uh -huh. um, bad smiling people are out there in the world perfectly happy? Uh -huh. So let's get down, step down from that authoritarian horse that yes. I'm the dentist, I'm the hygienist, I know what's good yeah. for you, and get into the fact that they don't have to do anything. Mm -hmm. And part of our job as professionals mm -hmm. is to show them that their life will be better immeasurably mm -hmm. because of the great stuff we have to offer from here, from here mm -hmm. and the heart. Yeah. Oh, oh, wow. Make sense? Yeah, totally. I'm just reflecting on myself right now as you speak. And you, you are an excellent you know, wisdom sharer as well. Because tell my even wife. Please tell really? my wife and kids, <laughs> <laughs> especially my kids. Oh my, I, I know it's a little different even when I think about my mom. I mean, she has so much influence, but when she talks to me, I'm like, what? No, mm -mm. you know, anyhow. But it really makes me think of more the human aspect. And that's what you're, you are about and your book is about. It's not about, you know, production or it's not about this and, and the, the bacteria. It's really like 
being a human, the patient is a human. Our team members are people who need love, and you really lead with that. Yeah. And I, I changed. Today, I changed. I swear I changed, Alan, today with your talk. Mm-hmm. Here's wow. my frailty. Mm-hmm. Here's my frailty. And you understand where I come from. Mm-hmm. Never in my life would I ever have imagined being mm-hmm. able to influence the way I am. And mm-hmm. it is just, I've worked my whole life for this. I found mm-hmm. my why. Mm-hmm. I found my why. And to hear you say that, I did a lot of dentistry today. I did a lot of good stuff. You just made my day. Mm-hmm. Um, the, this is, it is amazing that mm-hmm. when we recognize, when we mm-hmm. go back and think about why we wanted to become a dental hygienist mm-hmm. or a dentist, mm-hmm. And come on, don't kid me. It's not the money. Mm. That's nonsense. That's, whoops, crap. Don't say <laughs> that. No wonder that. I went to a point before. There's money. Money mm-hmm. gives us a level of pleasure. Right. And those of us who've studied a little neurophysiology, it stimulates dopamine. It stimulates mm. that. Feel good. Ah, yeah. <laughs> We're, uh, we just booked our, our, our spring vacation, and that's mm-hmm. giving me a dopamine rush. Uh I'm excited. Um, Fran and I, my wife and I love Las Vegas and we go there. That's our happy place. Mm -hmm. This conservative humanistic guy just enjoys uh, the pleasures of Las Vegas, the music, people watching and so on. But that's us. That's what we Uh love. So I've got a rush on that. But Mm -hmm. there's the other side of it that we Mm -hmm. forget in, in our obsession with business, with plaque, with calculus, Mm -hmm. uh, with root planing, with toothbrushing, with flossing, etc., yeah. and that is the serotonin pathway of our brains, mm. the serenity of our day-to-day existence. Mm-hmm. So, if we are content, mm. comfortable in our own skins, and I don't mean without stress, I mean mm-hmm. comfortable in knowing what we're doing mm. is of value to another human being. Remember wow. why we applied to dental hygiene school or to dental school, and never ever forget that then all of a sudden what we're doing makes sense on a much different level that's serotonin so you're going you are aiding somebody's quality and oftentimes quantity of life Mm -hmm. with your work Mm -hmm. and on the other side on the dopamine side you're earning x amount of money to do whatever yes have a life have a life, support mm-hmm. your family, have mm-hmm. a little fun, so on and so forth. Yes. And remember too, no matter what you're earning, mm-hmm. uh, Miss, Miss, Miss or Mr. Hygienist, mm-hmm. you are earning more than most people in the world could imagine earning. That is true. So give Content. heed to that. Give heed to that. You're, you're mm-hmm. doing okay. Mm-hmm. Can you do better? Yes. Mm-hmm. Can anybody do better? Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm whatever it is you want, a discontented man or woman, mm-hmm. step up, pay the price and take it. Mm. Wow. You you know, I did many interviews, Alan, and like this one is really like heartwarming. I don't even know how, what else to say. You know, usually it's all about like, you know, let's do this and that and do a little bit better charting. And, and those are all great wisdoms. So this is really fundamental. This is yeah. it's at the root of us like just every day and w- our energy how we think about ourselves our love affects not just us but everything around us yeah so i don't know this has been so valuable yeah <laughs> yes yeah, and i would encourage we are you still there claire oh claire claire where'd you go uh-oh claire There we Sorry. are. I lost yes. it for a second. Okay, okay. So I was telling about the book. Alan, can you tell us what your website is too? Sure. My, and by the way, um, I would invite any of you hygienists, any, any, any Claire fan out there, mm-hmm. a friend of Claire's is a friend of mine. Oh, so you're so my, nice. my website is betterricherstronger.com. Mm-hmm. 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 And I have a Facebook page, mm-hmm. same name. Mm-hmm. And if you would um, honor me by requesting uh, to join it, mm-hmm. then please, 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 um, you know, just mm-hmm. go to, you know how to go to Facebook and do mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I put stuff up. Um, I'm putting more and more stuff up there. 
Right. And um, if you want my book, you can order my book through Amazon. Mm -hmm. Or if you want an autographed copy, you could message me and I'll send you I an know. autographed copy. I know. I should have uh, got that autograph when I met you last time. No, no. Well, last time. No. we'll see you real soon. And you just bring yes. the book with you. And I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll do that. But uh, any mm -hmm. friend of your, any, any of your followers, uh, mm -hmm. if you like what you hear from me, please, uh, by all means, mm -hmm. join, uh, join. Everybody my will like it. No, it, it's... Because, you know, dentistry is hard. Like, to me, it's much harder emotionally than I thought it would ever be. Sure it is. Like, sure I it thought is. it would dentistry. <coughs> no, it's people's work. <coughs> we fight bacteria, yeah. yes. But most of all, we, we <coughs> eat people. And yeah. people come in all shapes, <coughs> Excuse me. sizes. They, they are all different different yeah. motivation different backgrounds yeah and we have a very short amount of time to connect trying to do something for them trying to provide <clears throat> value mm -hmm. but especially you know it's, as someone who doesn't have a ton of experience it's i think that part is honestly the the thing that we struggle the most with not just like oh i don't have enough time to finish my procedures it's this emotion and we bring that back to our life every day and that affects us, our family members, who are those who are around us as well. Mm -hmm. We could do a whole nother hour on this. I'll, I'll go as long as you want me to go. Oh, wow. I, I've got time, but here's, here's the thing. Here's a mistake that I've mm -hmm. seen okay. both assistants and hygienists making. Yes. And that is um, you seat the person in your chair. And by the way, I've, I've gotten away from using the word patient. Okay. Uh, what do you call me, them? To me, a patient is down there and I'm up here. Okay. We call them people. We call people. them people seeking our care. Okay. Um, I have a, okay. a sign in my office mm -hmm. that says, enter as strangers, leave as friends. Oh, and wow. Very often okay. we call them our friends. Because uh -huh. You're right. When you trust somebody enough mm -hmm. to stick sharp instruments in your mouth and you actually pay them for it, mm -hmm. they got to be your friends. Mm -hmm. So when you see a person, uh, how are you, Claire? Oh, I'm fine. Um, I'm feeling lousy today. My, my kid has the flu. Oh, my kid has the flu too. Oh, it's terrible. No, that's not the approach. We want to listen generously. So Claire, how are you doing today? Oh, my, my middle child has the flu, doc. Oh, no, I'm so sorry. That must be taking a toll on you. Tell me what, tell me that impact on you. Tell me what that's doing. That must be turning your family upside down. Doc, you have no idea how crazy this is driving me. Uh, I'm losing you again there. There you are. Um, Uh-oh, are you there? Okay, I've lost the audio on you. Um, I see Yes, you can move. hear me now? There you are. There okay, you okay. Are. Um, draw so out from that. Okay. Ask questions. Stay in yeah. that conversation. Mm -hmm. um, my, to um, my tooth is killing me, Claire. Tell me more about that, Alan. Well, it's killing me. Well, has it been, um, how long has that been? How bad is it? Don't say, well, my husband has a toothache too. They, a person wants to talk about themselves. The more you draw them out, the more they're going to connect with you. And there will be a point, and you'll know it with some experience, when you lean out of that conversation and start um, guiding them, but draw them out. Three great words that you can use. Tell me more. Tell me more. You're right. Tell me more. Yeah. I like that word you said, generously. Listen generously. Mm -hmm. Give yourself a little, give them a little bit more. Yeah. The Such let a them talk. simple approach. But that's how we build trust. That's how we build the human connection versus being a patient, right? Yes. And it works especially well mm. with fearful people. Mm. Oh, I've had, I've had deadly scared people sit in that chair behind me. We have all, all, most of our new patient encounter, new person encounters, pardon me, said a dirty word, are back here. And yes. I sit next to them. Uh -huh. I'll say, tell me about yourself. Oh, really? Next, and they sit over there next to you. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Why not? Why not? What, it's like a coffee What does chat. it do for me to stand up here and look down I at know. you? Or yes. if 
you know, over here. Can you, you see me a little bit here? Mm -hmm. So they'll sit here and I'll just lean into them that way. Wow. Um, and the hygienist, you can mm -hmm. sit knee to knee in a chair in, in your right. hygiene room. Mm -hmm. And fearful people, mm. the more time you spend with them, even mm. though it's unproductive. I, mm. I had a lady here for an hour. Mm. Her, her consultation visit was an hour. I spent mm. two minutes in the chair and an hour back here. Mm. And I got nothing done. I generated mm -hmm. no money in that hour. Mm -hmm. Turned into a roundhouse bridge, Turn, a roundhouse of crowns and veneers. Mm -hmm. And she, she was shaking with fear. Mm -hmm. In fact, I sent her to a therapist first mm -hmm. oh, wow. to help her conquer her fear. Mm -hmm. But you conquered, I mean, you, you're the one who helped her by I sitting helped, there. I set her on the path to yeah. conquer the beast uh -huh. and we conquered it. Wow. You don't think I, this lady loves me more, more than anything? Oh, yes. And you don't think I got paid eventually, but that out, that non-productive $0 hour, mm -hmm. you know how I felt after that? And I, I went out to the front desk. I looked at Fran, my wife. And I said, we got something here. This is, this is what we do. This is who mm -hmm. we are. Mm -hmm. And all of us felt that. My wow. assistant, the hygienist, we all joined in that way. It was mm -hmm. awesome. Give, give, give. Alan, you really have something so special here, though, that I feel even through this camera, you know, through this audio, we're not together in the elevator. Yes, we were together in the conference. We were together. Your, par um, your presence, your philosophy is, is just so eye-opening to me, especially someone who's younger, who's kind of still learning dental hygiene and dentistry in general. So I really Thank appreciate you. everything you said. Final In word of wisdom here. Yes. It doesn't work perfectly 100% of the time. Uh -huh. You are going, I don't care if you're right out of school, uh -huh. if you're Claire, or if uh -huh. you're Alan. Uh -huh. You will stumble every now uh -huh. and then. And you will screw it up every now and then. Uh -huh. And there will be people who don't want your message uh -huh. every now and then. Yes. So what? Uh -huh. No, a hundred percent. So don't be so hard on yourself. Stop it. Stop it. Okay. Yeah. You're not perfect. Get over it. Mm. Get over it and accept yourself as an imperfect human being mm. practicing an art that's of imperfect love. in a hostile environment, which is somebody mm. else's mouth. Yes. Don't tell anybody. Some of my crown and bridge fails. <laughs> Some of my fillings have leaks. <laughs> and don't be I don't know why. Some, mm -hmm. no. mm -hmm. So just be gentle on yourself and just, yes. and sometimes there is no fault. Sometimes mm -hmm. the hostility, the oral environment. It is. Keep, yeah. And there's so many different ways to do that. I could go on forever. Well, I seem, it seems like honestly, like, I'll figure this out, Alan. If if you're you're very generous with your time as well with us right now, and especially educating us and a hygienist, our younger generation, I really appreciate that. I feel like there's so much more that there we is. need, and I love that you're a dentist as well. So you have a different perspective that I said in the beginning, and uh, it means a lot for us. You know, someone like you who's a dentist. Um, telling us your story of how you have an awesome office and how you value your dental hygienist. I have a very good office. I have a great hygienist. Mm -hmm. We're not, and I have a great assistant. Mm -hmm. And of course I have a perfect front desk person because I'm married <laughs> to her. Uh, but we're not perfect. We mm -hmm. don't do everything right a hundred percent of the time, mm -hmm. but we love what we do. And it's mm -hmm. almost like not, well, mm -hmm. we are going to work, but man, oh man, it, we, we just enjoy it. There's a comfort in this office and there's a palpable sense of love in this office. Yes. And you all can do it. And if your doc's not doing it, mm -hmm. you can do it. And yes. if your doc doesn't buy into it, who cares? You're working with love every day. Mm -hmm. Wow. Alan, you really touched my heart today. Thank you. And like this conference, you know, I'm listening to talks and talks and I'm educating myself. But this is so valuable. Understand why you're educating yourself and for mm -hmm. whom. For whom, yeah. And, and then pursue that. Technical mm -hmm. education is important. Mm -hmm. No question about it. Mm -hmm. Technical education is important. Mm -hmm. But always put it in here. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Alan.
Again, if you want to find his book, it's called right there. Fumble, fumble, stumble. Oh, yeah. Enjoy the enjoy ride. The, enjoy Lest the ride. in the quest for a joyful, prosperous life in the industry. <laughs> and um, yeah, you can do it. Hi, Janice, you can do this. Let's go. Make the world better. Make somebody's life better today. Oh, I love it. With love. With love. That's it. And enjoy the ride. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy the ride, just like you both said. Thank you right. so much, Alan. We will, can I? We will be in touch. And, yes. Can uh, I hug you from here? Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> we'll be in touch, and uh -huh. anytime you want me, um, I'm all yours. And say thank you to your beautiful, hundred percent perfect wife as well. Thanks, she Claire. She was also in the story, and your dental hygienist as well in the office. Thank you. Thanks, mm -hmm. Claire. Enjoy your time up in Boston. Have fun. All right. Okay. Bye bye. Bye.